Hey, 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 what's going on, guys and gals? Troy, ATXRC Productions, 3DR Solo Owners Group, all that. Um, so, we're sitting here with Solo today. Uh, this is going to be a update to my final update, to my final review, whatever you want to call it. Uh, you will notice FPVLR antenna and a tough leash antenna, uh, box at least sitting right here. Uh, that's going to be a teaser for another video that will be shot next and uploaded right after this or right around the same time. Um, so keep an eye out for that. Uh, I will be doing a comparison of the FPVLR V1 version 1 uh, and this is the original one of the original mock-up prototypes uh, and the tough leash and the stock duckies. I did a test run today on all three some interesting information back from them. Um, so stay tuned for the next video. That being said, uh, when I went on my flight today, I actually had to do a new firmware update. It's been about a week, a eh, week and a half since I've flown solo. I've been really, really busy. Um, and the new firmware seems to finally have caught up to this amazing copter, man. Uh, remember, when I talk about Solo, I talked about it in the most part as far as a system, as far as copter, gimbal, combination. Um, I know all the 3DR guys out there, especially, and I mean the actual guys that work at 3DR, um, have not necessarily enjoyed, you know, the second portions of my reviews that I had started doing once the gimbal arrived. Um, you know, everybody loved all my raving about the copter when the copter was the only thing on the market. Um, but when I brought up how much the gimbal cost and the initial launch of the gimbal and what the gimbal did performance wise and what the quality of all the plastic and all of that kind of made me feel, um, how all of that came together and made me feel for the cost. People kind of turned on me. That's fine. Um, you know, not everybody wants to hear the criticism. They just want to hear the applause. Um, but along the way, I've said, as a copter, the thing is amazing. And it is. The copter itself, hands down, fly it hands on with a DJI copter that's not an Inspire. I'm not going that level, but fly it against a P3 of any level. Um, just the copter. I haven't heard anybody tell me that it doesn't fly better. I mean, that it doesn't have a really great feel, uh, that it doesn't have a really smooth flight, that it doesn't allow you to tailor it into a really, really great filming perspective. Um, everybody that's seen it, that's flown it, that I've thrown the sticks at has all said those things, that uh, maybe they haven't said the actual words that it's better than the P3, but I've, the response is well known and well shown in their reactions. So the copter, awesome. It has been flying since day one damn near better than I could ever expect. Um, yes, it had a few glitches or blugs here or there that caused a few people to crash here or there, but 3DR took care of that. Um, anyways, who cares about the past? Today, it flew great. Um Picture quality, tremendously improved. Um, you're going to see all of these results in the footage on the next video. But I just want to put it out there. I got a mile out of this thing. A mile out of its stock rubber duckies or whatever you want to call them, the ducky antennas. Um, yeah. I was surprised. I was happy. Um, not only did I get a mile... But whatever they did to tweak the signal and whatever and how it's dropping in and out, I got no RTHs except for when I got out of range. So I didn't get any of the phantom return home or controller signal lost on the controller, but I still have control. None of that. Um, video feed, crystal clear. All the way up to probably the last 300 feet, it started stuttering. But besides that, smooth clean picture no pixelation no garbage no nothing um, all on stock I was pretty damn happy I didn't even test the free sky antennas just because of how happy I was with the uh, results from the uh, stock ones so um, great work thank you 3dr thank you I would tell you today if you go buy this as a gimbal and a copter and take it out the box update it and go fly it 
you're going to be damn satisfied. And I'll tell you, it is now definitely competition for those other copters out there. Um, yes, you still need a GoPro. Most people in this hobby probably have one. Um, so the price to get into one, still a little expensive. But I would tell you that it is now worth the extra three, four, five hundred dollars, whatever you, whatever camera you choose. That's kind of the difference between this and a P3 uh, Pro. I, I would say it's worth it. It's definitely worth it. And I just want to say again, 3DR, thank you. If we could have got this out the box package at launch, if you guys would have just waited till now, honestly, yes, y'all would have put up with a lot of criticism about where's the delays, where's the delays. I would have pre-ordered this thing back in March like I did and been happy to wait until October, November. Seriously. Obviously, this is Monday morning quarterback and this is after the fact. I'm just saying. It's there. It's here. Just, I don't know. Yes, I'm that happy with it now. Um, not to say that there isn't going to be any things along the way. Not to say that the gimbal is still, I don't know. I haven't actually reviewed today's footage, but I'm sure because of my choice in 5.4 millimeter lens and 4.35 millimeter, millimeter lens, it's going to be needing some post stabilization. I'm fine with that. The only thing that I would say that 3DR has got to get right now, we have to get a better ribbon cable. Relish 3D out there or three whatever, I think it's relish3d.com or um, I forget. There's a gentleman out there that's been putting in a lot of work on getting a great cable that he has. Um, I haven't gotten one of them yet. I'll be honest, I'm not really willing to spend 40 bucks on a cable. <laughs> I'll post stabilize before I've spent 40 bucks on a cable. Um, but I would take one if 3DR sent me one. So 3DR, get with Relish 3D and get those cables. Um, send them out like you sent us out the leg extensions, okay? Um, again, fix the mistake, give us a, pro a solution to the problem, and hey, we're all there. Um, yeah. Just wanted to do an update on it, man. Uh, update for version 1.3 on the firmware. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and throw up on the screen my up-to-date kind of software package that it shows on the app. Uh, I'd also like to give huge props to 3DR for changing, and I'm sure some of this comes with the new regulating and all that, and they're trying to get ahead of. Uh, the new app does make you register online and kind of sign up. It also does your initial flights after updating, which means kind of out the box. Uh, gives you some tutorials that we didn't do before. Um, really, really great stuff. I still think it needs to be taken a step further, and I, I don't really want videos that everybody can skip over. Um, I think it should just be kind of a checklist. You know, is the area clear? Are there any, you know, any um, airports or whatever things nearby that you should watch out for? Um, are the props on right? Everything powered up right? Just a couple of checklists. I think that would be best, but that's just my opinion. A um, couple of app updates that I'd like to see, and I know there's a huge app change coming. Uh, right now, you have GoPro control. You can switch from video to pictures. You can um, do a couple of different things with the app that you couldn't do before. Um, that's great. There's supposedly a really big app change coming, and that's going to be interesting and cool and fun. Uh, Tower now actually connects to Solo, and apparently I haven't worked with it, but I've heard that Tower is actually making some great strides um, and can really be an advantage to using Solo. Um, so good stuff. I would like to see some more hotkeys or some more kind of presets that I could set on the app. I would love to be able to set a preset for specific um, speed of the camera, the yaw or whatever, the speed of the copter, uh, RTHs. I'd love to have a couple of profiles that I could switch between um, and I could maybe name them. I know, I know it's asking for a lot, but it would be really cool to be able to load this thing up and go to a specific profile for flight path or flight uh, settings that I would like for that specific area. And I would also like, if possible, to be able to refly previously set cable cams, orbits, and other smart shots. I would love to be able to, at a touch of a button, it recognize, hey, not recognize, but I say, hey, I'm at this park. I'd like to fly this. Some checkoffs, yes, I definitely want to do this, should kind of pop up because you'd hate to be in the wrong location and have this thing fly 20 miles away. But 
Um, I don't know. That's up to you guys to figure out how to do. Um, I know you've done some other great stuff that allows some kind of sensing of its location and stuff. One thing that I've read in one of the app updates is, or the firmware updates is, this thing is supposedly no longer supposed to pop up to the RTH height once you're within a certain distance of returning home. Um, I don't know. I haven't seen it used yet. I have to kind of go practice it. The way I'm going to test it is with the uh, low battery warnings. When it comes back, um, typically what happens is I'll be bringing it back before the, the last warning, and then it would pop up trying to RTH whenever it hits that last warning. Um, I think that's what that fix is supposed to, to go into. So cool. Um, we're at 10 minutes. I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up. 3DR, thank you. Again, the copter out the box is good to go now. Thank you. Um, go out there and get you a solo. Let's go fly. Fly safe, fly smart, fly 3DR. Peace.